The final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 10022 in the name of Sandra White on Operation Blue Star. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to contribute to the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Sandra White to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Ms White. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and can I welcome the Indian Ambassador to the Parliament? And uh, can I also take a moment to welcome all of the members of the Sikh community here today in the public gallery for this members' debate? Uh, very much welcome you all here today. Uh, presiding officer, 25 years ago, Operation Blue Star began with the massing of Indian Army troops to be sent to the northern Indian state of Punjab, along with helicopter, gunships and tanks. What happened next has had lasting repercussions and the recent release of documents illustrating UK government involvement in the planning of the operation have only served to raise more questions than they have answered. But what did happen next from an outside perspective? It is hard to know for sure, for the authorities imposed a complete curfew on the entire state, denying entry to foreign observers and rounding up journalists to take them out of it. What we do know is that the army attacked with a ferocity that had not been seen before and that tragically many, many lives were lost. The temporal seat of the Sikhs, the Act al was severely damaged and the Sikh reference library containing many precious documents was lost to fire. Unconfirmed reports from those caught up in the battles spoke of hundreds being taken with their hands tied behind their backs and shot. And many newspapers reported that atrocities had taken place across the Punjab and the army had acted with impunity. Of course, we also know that the holy site, the Golden Temple, was attacked with many inside killed and its holy treasures looted. The whole story and the stories of this bloody episode are perhaps yet to be told. The truth is still yet to be fully brought to light and for those involved to be able to close this chapter in India's history. I, for one, do not profess to hold the right to judge those involved, for that is for those affected by it from all sides. It is for them to come to terms with what happened and to heal wounds in whatever way they can. However, when documents released under the 30-year rule revealed that the UK government had provided, at the very least, advice on removing Sikhs from the Golden Temple. I and others wanted answers. In Scotland, we pride ourselves on having vibrant and diverse communities, and I believe that the different peoples who make up these communities are as integral as one another, and they deserve exactly the same respect and compassion as any others. I'm sure we would all stand up for anyone in our community who we thought had been the victim of an injustice. And for me, this is no different. So what exactly did the UK government know? What advice did it give? And what information is it still keeping from us? I do not believe the inquiry set up by the Prime Minister understood the depth of feeling amongst the Sikh community around this issue. And I do not think it gave them the proper respect that they are due. The inquiry stated that over 200 files with over 23,000 documents were looked at as a part of the inquiry, yet has failed to release them. And I think it's time we know why they didn't release them. I also note in the report to the Prime Minister that many military files were related to the period from December 1983 until June 1984 were destroyed. And the UK High Commission reported that a revised plan had been approved of, although it states to be unsure whether this is one based on UK advice or not. These uncertainties only add to the doubts felt by the Sikh community rather than allaying them and give strength to calls for an independent judge-led inquiry to be established to look into the extent of UK government involvement in Operation Blue Star. As the UK government said at this time, these events led to a tragic loss of life and we understand the very legitimate concerns that these papers will raise. To this, I applaud the UK Government for acknowledging that the concerns the release of these papers raise are of a legitimate nature. I hope that they will understand that the concerns have not gone away, but rather have grown, and that in order to give the Sikh community the answer they deserve, a full public inquiry should be undertaken. If we had lost family members, relatives or friends, 
yet had not been able to have closure as to the circumstances which led to their loss, the least we would seek would be the opportunity to uncover all of the facts surrounding what involvement our government had had in the events. And this is a right that I think should be fundamental to all. Thank you very much, President Officer. Many thanks. I call Liz Smith to be followed by Linda Fabiani. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, at the weekend, BBC Radio ran an item on the Sunday programme which examined the facts of Operation Blue Star and the events in Hyde Park to mark the anniversary. It included comment from the highly respected former India correspondent Mark Tully, who had reported on the 1984 military operation, uh, highly respected senior members of the Sikh community, both in Britain and in India, and also comment from some uh, young Sikhs. It was an extremely interesting piece, and it urged public caution and careful understanding of the very deep-seated concerns which have marked the legacy of Operation Blue Star. I think it's very clear that apart from uh, capturing the headlines around the world, the events of June the 3rd to 8th June 1984 were seen by many as a defining moment in Sikh political history. The potent mix of a military attack on the Golden Temple, the holiest shrine in the Sikh faith, the demand for Khalistan to be a separate state, and the mix of militants, pilgrims and other faiths all becoming involved in the dispute was clearly toxic. And of course the aftermath was the assassination of Indira Gandhi in October 1984. Feelings quite naturally run very high still. And there is debate amongst those who have been asked to comment about this weekend's anniversary as to whether it should perhaps be seen more in the context of a commemoration or in the context of a rally to promote future political support. Opinion on the BBC programme and within the newspaper coverage, probably uh, within this parliament too, is strongly divided. And that makes it even more important, just as uh, Sandra White has said, that we are sensitive about the way forward. Now, I note that Sandra White's motion states that there was uh, British foreknowledge and involvement of the planning of the operation, as indicated by the release of the papers under the 30-day rule. These poor papers rightly prompted an investigation ordered by the Prime Minister, who was very clear in recognising uh, that the events of 1984 had led to a tragic loss of life, and he said that he understood the very legitimate concerns that these papers will raise. And that's something that I think has been uh, welcomed by the Sikh community, notwithstanding that the fact remains for a full public inquiry. Again, opinions differ markedly between those who allege the full involvement of the UK government and the, those who led Operation Blue Star who deny that that was the case. These facts are clearly a matter of dispute and as Sandra, right, as Sandra White has rightly said, the member's business is not the appropriate forum to debate politics of that dispute. What is appropriate is to move forwards towards reconciliation, to try whatever method is possible to heal the deep-seated wounds which have existed and which continue to exist within the Sikh community. I note that over the weekend, hundreds of British Sikhs marched from Hyde Park to Trafalgar Square to protest against Operation Blue Star. They were peaceful and were correctly exercising a democratic right. What concerns the vast majority of people, however, no matter what their political views are, is the more militant acts which have persisted since 1984. At the Golden Temple itself on Friday morning, there were violent clashes involving all kinds of uh, uh, attempts to uh, take opposition to its extreme case, and obviously six people were badly injured. Media personnel were assaulted and cameras were broken. And as recently, of course, as events in August uh, just last year, uh, there were issues about military leaders being under attack uh, as well. I think it's important that we understand that world events, wherever they take place, when things are as divisive uh, and obviously as reflective on the difficult situations that have arisen, that we should not allow these extreme elements to start inciting hatred of other religious communities. And I know that the Sikh community uh, in uh, Scotland uh, is working very hard to ensure that that is not the case. Rather, in both India and in the UK, uh, religious works are working tirelessly to find ways where people on all sides uh, can live together and interact uh, peacefully. Uh, we've seen so many issues of tensions and violence, but I think it's very clear that the events of 1984, if they are to be remembered properly, then it must be a way forward of reconciliation and not retribution. And I hope that that is the guiding principle about which we can all abide as we work forward. Thank you. Thank you.
Many thanks. I call Linda Fabiani to be followed by Neil Finlay. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And uh, I'm pleased that, that Sandra White has brought this debate uh, to the Chamber, although I wish it hadn't been necessary. Um, I, um, I think, like many, many people in Scotland, um, didn't know at all much about Sikhism. And it was only, uh, I think it was the last election, there was a Sikh chap in East Kilbride that got in touch with me to say, uh, you don't know enough about our religion, our culture, our heritage, our history, and it's about time you did. And uh, he was absolutely quite right. And um, I know it's a terrible thing to generalise about people, but it seems to me the Sikhs are a pretty straightforward uh, kind of folk and say things like they are. So I did start to learn about it, and I visited the Gurdwara in Glasgow and was fascinated to learn about uh, the history of uh, Sikhism in the Indian subcontinent and indeed um, that related history of the UK um, that has been there for, for a couple of centuries now, I think. In fact, I was reading in the, um, the briefing that came from the Gurdwara about the first Sikh who came to Scotland, and that was in, in 1849. So, what we're talking about here are British citizens. We're talking about English Sikhs, Welsh Sikhs, Irish Sikhs, and, and Scottish Sikhs that deserve justice. And I have to say, as shown in Sandra's uh, motion, it doesn't look to me like they're getting much justice at the moment from the government of the country in which they live. It seems very clear now from what we've heard, and I can understand why members of the community were reeling, absolutely reeling, when they learned that the UK government had in fact been involved in the planning of that 1984 Indian Army attack on the Golden Temple. Having received British advice over a plan to remove Sikh extremists from the Golden Temple in Amritsar. I can understand why people feel that it's time the truth was uncovered. I can understand why people feel very strongly that a public inquiry should be held to bring all this out into the open. I was aware that when uh, the Prime Minister David Cameron visited the Golden Temple um, last year, just over a year ago, he did decline to, to apologise for the 1919 massacre there, but said we must learn lessons. That's fair enough. Let's learn lessons. And surely one of the lessons that should be learned is that you have to be open and transparent about the truth when it is people in your country, when it is your own citizens um, who are calling for this and who feel they are being very, very unfairly treated. Now, when you look at the issues with the report, um, uh, there, there's events and documents relating to the events um, which were pivotal to the inquiry, which were not specified. There's a view that these have to be so that we can get full transparency. Um, it was said that... Um, the report said that uh, the reason such documentation had not been permitted was due to the practices of the Indian government. Well, that's a bit of a woolly statement. Practices aren't law, they aren't legislation. Um, if there's practices of the Indian government, it doesn't mean that the British government have to agree with them. There is surely room for much discussion there. The bit that, that really got to me was that no question was raised as to the practical UK support for military operations and it was an internal matter well that's just a bit of a cop-out really we've heard that over and over again and I remember um, back some time when um, the UK government was sending arms to Indonesia under a so-called ethical foreign policy which said they should never be used for external aggression or internal oppression but they were still selling arms, although people were getting slaughtered, both in East Timor and West Papua. Seems to me that that lesson hasn't been learned. So I'm aware that I have to close. What I would say is that I agree with everything that's in Sandra White's motion. I agree with the call from the Sikh community, the Scots Sikhs, that say we must have this inquiry because we deserve the truth. And I would really like to see the UK government agreeing that they will look for the truth and um, declaring that lessons have, in fact, been learned. Thank you. Thank you. And
now call Neil Finlay. President, no, no intentions of speaking in this debate. I don't have anything particularly illuminating to add. I only stayed out of, out of nosiness to, to see, uh, uh, hear about the, the subject. Indeed, I, I, I vaguely remember the, 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 the events happening when I was in, I think, fourth or fifth, uh, fourth year at school. Um, but um, I think what we're seeing about the events uh, uh, at the temple in the Punjab 30 years ago strikes me as having many similarities with a number of domestic issues in the UK, um, a, a number of domestic issues that I have an interest in. I'm only going to speak very, very briefly on these, but there is clearly um, a, 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 some similarities in the way in which the role of the state, the way in which the state has been involved in this, the role of the security services, probably the role of the police and the general establishment. And that, that, the sh there's a shared uh, uh, interest in this, because if we look at things like the Hillsborough disaster, if we look at the case of the Shrewsbury pickets, if we look at the case of the camel layered ship workers, the blacklisted workers, the Hillsborough victims and victimised minors, all show glaring similarities with the role of the state in this case. And I think the release of the paper papers and the exposure of the role of the state, and in particular the security services, is much needed, because we need to shine a light on what these people do. And that has been something that many campaigners have been trying to pursue for some time. The only thing I'm going to add to that is that this autumn, um, I've been working alongside the GMB trade union, and we're, we're going to host a justice conference in uh, Liverpool in the autumn. And that's going to bring together all of these campaigns. And uh, can I invite members of the Sikh community uh, to attend that uh, justice conference in Liverpool, where all of these common issues that these campaigners have been campaigning on about uh, release of papers, about evidence from the time and about bringing justice for these types of campaigns will be discussed at that conference. And what the aim of it is, is that all these campaigners will speak to one another and learn from other, one another and will have legal representation from, at the highest level. So I, I think it's an open invitation to attend because much of the things that are being campaigned about here will have a lot in common with a number of com campaigners in this country who have very similar concerns to the people here. Thanks. Malcolm Chisholm. Um, I would also like to congratulate Sandra White for bringing this important uh, subject before the Chamber today. It is not uh, an issue that I, I have any uh, great knowledge of, but I certainly have a great deal uh, of respect for the Sikh community. Clearly, many Sikhs have lived uh, in Leith over a period of, of many years and have contributed a great deal uh, to Scottish society. So I would always listen very carefully to the views and concerns uh, of Sikhs, and I think uh, if uh, they uh, are, are demanding that more should be found out about this, uh, terrible, these terrible events, then certainly I would be prepared to uh, back up their call. I think uh, the theme of reconciliation that Liz Smith talked about is absolutely central. I think whatever happened, obviously we don't want that to fester and to promote tension between different uh, communities and different religions. So reconciliation has to be at the heart of this debate. But the other side of the coin of reconciliation is truth, and you can never have proper reconciliation until the truth uh, of a situation has emerged. So I would certainly uh, uh, support uh, certainly the Sikhs in my constituency and the Sikhs more generally in Scotland who want to get to the truth of that. That, this, that, that seems to be a completely reasonable uh, demand that we should support. Clearly it's not this parliament that can act directly on that. So some of us will no doubt have discussions with our colleagues in the uh, UK parliament because uh, it's in that parliament that the decisions about this uh, will be made. But certainly I, I would uh, uh, undertake to discuss that with my, uh, um, certainly the, the colleague uh, who represents uh, my constituency in the UK Parliament, and, uh, and I'm sure he also will be mindful of the demands uh, of Sikhs in his community and further afield. So let's have reconciliation, but let's have truth as well, and let's also always remember the enormous contribution that Sikhs have made and still make to the life of Scotland. Many thanks. Can I now invite Hamza Yusuf to respond to the debate, Minister, in around seven minutes or so? Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. My thanks to Sandra White, the MSP, for bringing this very important motion uh, to the Parliament today. I extend a warm welcome to the Indian Consul General and also Sasri Akar to all the members of the Sikh community who have joined us from across uh, the country. 
I would like to offer uh, this government's deepest condolences once again to those who were affected by the tragic events which took place in 1984, those who were killed, injured, maimed, but also to this very day, those family members who still suffer uh, without having proper closure. Um, it's right and it's fitting that in the 30th anniversary year of Operation Blue Star, uh, the Scottish Parliament remembers all of those uh, that I mentioned who have lost their lives, but still continue to be affected uh, indeed. Uh, Operation Blue Star was ordered uh, by the then uh, Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, uh, to remove Sikh uh, separatists and insurgents from the Golden Temple in Amritsar. Um, they were accused of amassing weapons in the temple, and as Liz Smith said and many other members, uh, we're not here to debate the politics of the right and the wrong uh, of that operation, uh, or indeed the politics that continues actually even to this day. Uh, but what we do know is the human tragedy that took place as a result of that operation and what followed thereafter. Uh, official figures put the death toll at 575, but other reports suggest that many, many more hundreds and even thousands were killed, including pilgrims uh, caught up in the crossfire. I understand, and many MSPs uh, have expressed this, the, still the deep pain that continues to be felt by the Sikh community as a result of that operation. Uh, this feeling was most recently echoed uh, by the First Minister uh, when he met representatives of the Glasgow Gurdwara uh, on a recent uh, visit. On the 13th of uh, January uh, 2014, as many have commented, following the release of two letters in the National Archives, uh, concerns were raised quite rightly about the UK Government's involvement in Operation Blue Star and that SAS officials had been dispatched to help India in the planning on the raid of the Golden Temple. No such suggestion had ever been made before or had been known. Uh, on the 15th of January 2014, the UK Prime Minister uh, stated that an urgent inquiry into the matter, led by the Cabinet Secretary, Sir Jeremy Haywood, was underway. Uh, the inquiry was completed on the 4th of February, followed by a statement to the UK Parliament by the, then, uh, by the current uh, Foreign Secretary uh, that very same day. Uh, we welcome the speed with which and the UK Government uh, acted. Um, and perhaps I can just read some of the summary conclusion uh, of that uh, report. Uh, Sir Jeremy Haywood's report, the conclusion read, uh, the nature of the UK's assistance was purely advisory, uh, limited and provided to the Indian government at an early stage, uh, that it had limited impact on the tragic events that unfolded at the temple three months later. Uh, he says uh, there was no link between the provision of this advice and defence sales, and there is no record of the government receiving advance notice uh, of the operation. In terms of the Scottish Government's response to that uh, report and to that conclusion, I then wrote a letter to the Foreign Secretary William Haig on the 10th of March of this year. I raised the real concerns of the Sikh community here in Scotland about the very narrow scope of the review. Uh, I got a letter from the, Glasgow, the President of the Glasgow Gurdwara uh, who felt that the, uh, let the report was far too narrow uh, in its remit, uh, it was an internal inquiry and then actually was asking for a public inquiry and an independent uh, inquiry. I then wrote uh, to the Foreign Secretary very much uh, on that uh, premise. So we do welcome the fact that the UK government conducted the swift review, but we believe fundamentally that the Sikh community deserves the right to an independent uh, inquiry that is transparent and is fair. They deserve the assurance that the UK government was in no way linked to the tragic events that happened at the Golden Temple in Amritsar in 1984. We believe that is fair and that is right. It has not happened yet, but we will continue to listen to those calls and pursue the government for full transparency. As many have said here, the Sikh community is one that I've uh, grown up uh, in and amongst uh, from a very uh, young age. My, uh, my father and my mother, both uh, uh, from the Punjab region in Pakistan, a very close affinity and relationship with that community. But here in Scotland, many members have spoke eloquently uh, about the uh, importance of the Sikh community uh, in their own uh, local constituencies. Uh, but some of the values of Sikhism are certainly worth an exploration, uh, as uh, uh, Linda uh, Fabiani uh, was talking about. When you explore uh, the, the, the actual religion, uh, you'll notice that the values are ones of devotion to God, uh, honest living, the equality uh, of all and one of my favourite is, is this idea of community service and actively caring for others. If any of you have a, a Gurdwara uh, in your constituency, uh, and uh, Deputy First Minister has uh, the largest uh, in the country in hers, that you will see that uh, every Sunday 
that it is welcome and open for anybody to come and to get free food, uh, which is you know, a fantastic service for those that live uh, locally, those that are, uh, but even reaching out specifically to the homeless uh, to try to get them in, those that don't get a meal. And in this day and age where we've had many a debate in here about food banks and you know, people having to choose between uh, heating and eating, you know, this is particularly relevant. Uh, and so I commend the Sikh community uh, very much for that. And they are a part of the rich tapestry uh, that we have here in Scotland. And just on a past lighter note, I was, on, uh, I was looking at the diaspora tapestry uh, in Preston Pans recently, and they had a tapestry from the Punjab, and it was of uh, the, the Lord of Les Mahego, Laird uh, Sardar Iqbal Singh, uh, who is a colourful and flamboyant character uh, indeed. So whether it's through small business, whether it's through their religion, through devotion uh, to God, or indeed uh, through politics, uh, a great contribution that the Sikh community has made. But that uh, relationship with the state is a two-way two thing that has to be built uh, on trust. And therefore, we very much owe it, uh, and the UK government certainly owes it, to the Sikh community, which we talk so highly about, about uh, making sure that they have that sense of closure uh, which has been uh, denied to them uh, thus far. So just in closing, uh, presiding officer, um, one way that we can achieve a, a truly just and fair society is by fully understanding how the tragedies of the past uh, were able to happen. Uh, and as I say in my discussions with the Sikh community, they do not have a sense of closure um, about what happened in Amritsar 30 years, years ago without a full understanding of the facts. And that includes the potential role of the then UK government. So I continue to express uh, the government's deepest condolences to those who have died and been affected of the, since the tragic events in 1984. Uh, I give an absolute commitment uh, to the Sikh community that we will continue, and I personally will continue, to repeat their calls for an independent, uh, fair, transparent inquiry uh, to be conducted by the UK government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. That concludes Sandra White's debate on Operation Blue Star, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.